Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about rational equations and how to solve them. We have been laying the groundwork for this section with the last few where we talked about how to multiply, how to divide, how to add and subtract rational expressions. So now we're going to have one or more rational expressions equal to one or more rational expressions, and that's where rational equations comes in. So we're going to talk about different strategies for how to solve a rational equation and how to make sure our solution is actually a solution and not an extraneous solution. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So one thing to be careful of is we've been doing a lot with rational expressions and we are still going to see problems that are expressions and that don't have equal signs. So anytime you're starting a problem, you need to make sure that you know whether you're solving, because there's an equal sign, or whether you're finding a common denominator so that you can add or subtract or multiply or divide. Because the strategies we're going to use in this lesson, we're going to use some of the skills that we learned in the previous sections. But again, the main goal here is that we are solving an equation. So if we were just multiplying, multiplying these two expressions and there was no equal sign here, this would be a totally different type of problem. So if we have two rational expressions, and there's a lot of different ways we can see this, our ultimate goal is to figure out what x value makes this true on both sides, creates an equal statement that makes both sides equal the same value. If we have fractions equal to fractions, we know that we could find a common denominator. And we talked about finding common denominators in the last lesson. So I could multiply this by x plus 1 over x plus 1. And I could multiply this fraction by 4x plus 5 over 4x plus 5. I'm going to put parentheses here. And now what I have is 3 times 4x plus 5, so 12x plus 15 over our common denominator, x plus 1 times 4x plus 5. And this is going to be equal to, if I distribute in the numerator on the other side, 9x plus 9 over 4x plus 5 times x plus 1. Now, if you think about it, if I had x over 5 equals 9 over 5, you could hopefully tell me that if these two things are equal, since the denominators are equal, the numerators have to be equal. So x in this case would have to be 9. What if I had this? The same idea, x plus 1 is going to need to equal this numerator since the denominators are the same. Well, if you look at what we just did, we just created a common denominator, which means since the denominators are exactly the same, we can just take the numerators and we can set them equal to each other. So we can say 12x plus 15 is going to equal 9x plus 9 and just ignore the denominator because if the denominators are equal, the numerators must also be equal. And now we just have an equation to solve so we can get all of our x's on one side and all of our constants on the other side and we can solve to get that x is going to be equal to negative 2. Now once you solve you need to check to make sure that this is not one of the extraneous solutions. So what were we not allowed to plug in at the beginning? We're not allowed to plug in negative 1. That would make this denominator 0. We're not allowed to plug in negative 5 over 4. That would make this denominator 0. So this answer is an acceptable final answer. We could even plug it in to make sure it works. If I plug negative 2 in, I'm going to get 3 over negative 1. If I plug it into the other side, I'm going to get 9 over negative 8 plus 5, negative 3. And this is, in fact, a true statement. Now, since we just had one fraction equal to one fraction, what we can really do is just actually say multiplying by this common denominator, getting a common denominator is the same thing as cross multiplying. So multiplying 9 by x plus 1, right? That's what we really did here. And multiplying 3 by 4x plus 5, that's really what we did here. So a lot of times people think about this as saying, we're just going to multiply these two things together and set them equal to each other. 
The reason that that shortcut works is because what you're really doing is finding a common denominator and then dropping the denominator since once the denominators are equal, the numerators have to be equal. So you can skip that step where you're showing the common denominator work if you're thinking about it as cross multiplying, but you have to make sure that it's an equal sign and you have to make sure you have one fraction is equal to another fraction. Otherwise, that strategy doesn't work. I sort of prefer to just show this first step where I'm multiplying each side by the denominator of the other side. So I'm going to multiply this by 3x plus 2 over 3x plus 2. I'm going to multiply the right side by x plus 2 over x plus 2. Now the denominators are the same, so I'm really just going to multiply here, which is going to give me 6x plus 4, and multiply here, which is going to give me 10x plus 20. And then I can solve. So 4x is going to equal negative 16, which means x is going to equal negative 4. I'm going to double check that negative 4 doesn't make one of the denominators 0, which it does not. And that's going to give me a solution. And again, I can plug that back in to check and make sure that it works. 2 over negative 2 should be equal to 10 over negative 12 plus 2. That's going to give me negative 1 equals negative 1, and that's going to work. All right, I'm gonna encourage you to pause the video and work through number three on your own. Check to make sure your solution's not extraneous and then unpause the video and see how you did. So after you cross multiply or do that common denominator step, you're gonna get negative four X plus 12 equals five X plus 15. Combine like terms or move all your X's to one side and all your constants to the other, negative nine X equals three. That's gonna give you negative one third. Negative one third is not extraneous, and we could take the time to plug it back in to make sure that it works. So this strategy is great if you just have one rational expression equal to another rational expression. But what happens if our problem is more complicated than that? Okay, so here in example two, we have more than two rational expressions. In this case, we actually have three rational expressions. So our goal is still gonna be to combine or add these two together on the left hand side for number four so that we can use the same approach that we used before once the denominators are the same we can drop the denominators and just solve the numerators so keeping that in mind if we can get a common denominator everywhere we can just multiply to get that common denominator and then solve the numerator so what's the common denominator going to be here well it's going to be four and x so like we learned in the addition subtraction lesson, this is going to need a 4, this is going to need an x, this is going to need a 4. So we're going to multiply each part by 1, but in the form that we need it to be in. So now we have 20 plus 7x, and both of these are over the common denominator 4x, is equal to negative 36 over that same common denominator 4x. If the denominators are the same, we can simply solve the numerator. So 20 plus 7x equals negative 36. So 7x equals negative 56, and x is going to be negative 8. The only value x is not allowed to be is 0, so negative 8 is going to work there. I actually want to show you a completely different approach to that exact same problem. And if you have strong number sense and you noticed this at the beginning, it could save you time on certain types of problems. It's one of those approaches that doesn't work on every problem. So it's really only good if you recognize it. So one of the things that I noticed on this problem was that these two fractions already have a common denominator which means what I could actually do is instead of finding a common denominator for everything, I could first subtract 5x on both sides. Negative 9x minus 5x is negative 14x. Now I have one fraction equal to one fraction, so I can cross multiply or think about it as finding that common denominator. And that would give me 7x equals negative 56, and I still get to that same solution of negative 8. So if you recognize, hey, two of these pieces already have a common denominator, I could move them to the same side, that may simplify things. The approach that we talked about up here is always going to work though. 
So if you don't want to have to worry about it, you can always start by finding the common denominator for everything, as opposed to trying to move one piece first. Okay, let's look at number five. When I look at number five, I have one, then I have x minus five and x in the other two denominators. So if I'm thinking about my common denominator, my common denominator is going to be x times x minus five. So I'm going to ask myself, what do each of these parts of the fraction need? So one, which I'm going to rewrite as one over one, it needs both of these pieces. So I need to multiply it by x times x minus five, which is the same thing as x squared minus five x. Minus, I have this eight over x minus five. What does that one need? This needs an x. So I'm gonna multiply it by x over x. This is gonna equal three over x. What does this need to have a common denominator? It needs x minus five over x minus five. So now every single denominator is x times x minus five or x squared minus five x. If all of the denominators are equal, I can just solve the numerator. So I can set the, I can just solve what is left on the top of the fractions. x squared minus 5x minus 8x is going to equal 3 times x minus 5 or 3x minus 15. Now I can get everything on the same side. x squared, this is going to be negative 13x minus 3 more, negative 16x my, plus... 15 equals 0. So I'm just combining everything to the left side. And now I have a quadratic, which I'm going to try and solve by factoring. So what multiplies to be 15 that adds to be negative 16, negative 15 and negative 1? So we're going to get two solutions here, 1 and 15. And I'm going to just double check. None of those make a denominator 0, so both of those answers are acceptable. And we could plug them back in to make sure that they mathematically create a true equation as well. So we found a common denominator. And just like we did in the addition subtraction lesson, we multiplied each term by the piece that it needed to have that common denominator. Then we dropped the denominator off of all the problems and just solved the numerator. Then we checked. In this case, we had to factor to find those solutions. Then we checked that our solutions aren't extraneous. And then we wrote our final answer in set notation, smaller answer, comma, larger answer. Okay, I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and try and work through number six on your own. At least find the common denominator step first. Then unpause the video and see how you did. So hopefully you had time to work through this. Here's the common denominator step. Now if I simplify the numerators, I'm going to have x squared minus 4x minus 2x. And if I distribute on this side, is equal to 4x minus 16. And then if I get everything on the same side, x squared minus 10x plus 16 is going to equal 0. So x minus 8, x minus 2 is going to be 0. So I'm going to get 2 and 8 as my two solutions. Neither of those are extraneous, so I'm going to put them in set notation. And there I have my final answer. Let's go ahead and look at a couple more solutions, and I'm going to make sure that we have a couple where we do, in fact, have an answer at the end that is extraneous. Okay, so I'm telling you ahead of time, we're going to get at least one answer in these problems that does not work when we plug it back in. However, we're still going to work through it with the same perspective that we already had. So the first thing we need to do is find a common denominator. So I want to point out that x squared minus 9 simplifies to be x minus 3, x plus 3. So it looks like our common denominator is going to be x minus 3 times x plus 3. So I'm going to give myself some space here. 6 over x minus 3, that needs x plus 3 over x plus 3 equals 8x squared over, I'm going to just write this as x plus 3x minus 3. That fraction already has the common denominator, so it doesn't need anything else. Minus 4x over x plus 3. And which denominator piece does that need? It needs an x minus 3 over an x minus 3. Again, so now this is equal to this is equal to this. So we can just solve the numerators. So let's look at those numerators. On the left-hand side, this is going to become 6x plus 18. 
This is going to equal 8x squared minus, if I distribute here, 4x squared minus negative 12x, so plus 12x. Now we're going to go ahead and get everything on the same side. That's going to give me 4x squared plus 6x minus 18. And I need to factor this, but something I noticed first is all these numbers are even, and I would love to just make them a little bit smaller. So I can divide everything on both sides of the equation by two. And now I have a trinomial that I think is gonna be a little easier to factor. So I wanna multiply to be nine and add to be, sorry, multiply to be negative nine and add to be positive three. So I'm thinking I need three times three for nine and that's gonna give me six X minus three X is three X. Okay, so we're good here. So this is gonna give me x equals three over two and negative three. Now I have to check. Three over two does not make any of these denominators zero, so we're good there. Negative three will make this denominator zero. So negative three is an extraneous solution. The only solution that's gonna work then is three over two. If both of the solutions that I found were extraneous, if this happened to be positive three and this was negative three, then the answer would be that there's no real solution. Here, we just had one solution that was extraneous, so there still is a solution to this problem. It is just not the solution that, that when we plug back in makes the denominator of one of the original fractions zero. All right, let's look at our very last example. I'm gonna move it up and factor the denominators, and then I'm gonna encourage you to try and work through it all the way on your own. All right, so here we have factored denominators. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can find that common denominator on your own, and then unpause the video and see how you did. So here's the common denominator, and I just wrote this as x minus three quantity squared, because it looks like we're gonna need two x minus threes in the denominator and one x plus three. Now, go ahead and see if you can solve it the rest of the way. All right, hopefully you've had time to try and solve this. I'm gonna just do the simplification step where I'm multiplying all these things out. So here's that step. Now I'm gonna distribute this two, and then I'm gonna combine like terms on the right-hand side. Now I'm gonna get everything on the same side, and I'm gonna move everything to the left. So that's gonna give me x squared minus two x minus 15 is zero. I can factor that, x minus five times x plus three is zero, so x is gonna be five and negative three. Negative three is an extraneous solution, so the only solution I'm gonna have for this problem is that x is equal to five. So let's recap what we covered in this video. First, we talked about what an irrational equation is and how if we just can get it into the form one fraction equals one fraction, we can cross multiply or we can find a common denominator and set the numerators equal to each other. Then we looked at problems where we had more than just one fraction equal to one fraction, where we had to do a little bit more work as we learned in the addition subtraction section to get that common denominator between all of our terms so that we could just solve the numerator. We talked about lastly, how to check to make sure we don't have an extraneous a solution, a solution that we can't plug back in because we create zero in the denominator of our fractions, which is not allowed, and how to write our final answer in set notation. So go ahead and write down any questions you have, and I look forward to supporting you on this. Thanks for listening.